Let's talk about the serious going ons of uh, of Oregon, Portland. Federal judge denies Oregon attorney general's motion to restrict federal police actions. Now, this story is very, very simple. It's basically, uh, let, me, let me just read you the quick context. A federal judge Friday denied a temporary restraining order that Oregon's attorney general sought to restrict federal officers' tactics in Portland, finding the state lacked legal standing and presented scant evidence to support allegations that federal officers were illegally snatching people off city streets. <laughs> Boom! <sighs> That's what we've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. The fake news. They've all of these outlets have been running rampant, being like, they're snatching people off the streets. When they actually went to court and the judge was like, can you show us them doing this? They were like, no, your honor, but get out. And the judge was like, okay, get out of my courtroom. Denied. It's not real. They're not doing this. Nope. So how is it that all of these news outlets are saying unmarked, ununiformed? Ununiformed? What does that even mean? Naked. We get to this point now where we've talked about it. Ladies and gentlemen, on this program, you, you have heard us talk about the game of telephone that journalists play. Yep. I would like to present to you the most extreme game of telephone we, will, we have seen yet. <sighs> but first, let me read this next paragraph. You get a little bit on our standing. U.S. District Judge Michael W. Mossman issued his ruling two days after hearing about 90 minutes of argument by, the phone, uh, by phone conference. It comes on the 58th consecutive day of protests. Are we really at day 58? It's so. like it's like every time I read a new article, they're claiming it's a day later. I lost track. Yeah. Time's weird right now. Okay. I guess we're on day 58. Uh, so yes, quote, because it has not shown it is vindicating an interest that is specific to the state itself, I find the state of Oregon lacks standing here and therefore deny its request for a temporary restraining order. Oregon Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum had urged the judge to bar federal officers from engaging in unconstitutional police state type tactics, alleging the federal officers have violated protesters' rights to free expression and assembly, unreasonable search and seizure and due process. The Attorney General and her lawyers referenced two incidents, two, I, told, I, I said this, it was two videos, that's it, in which men in camouflage fatigues took Michael Pettibone of downtown at 2 a.m., placed him in an unmarked van and took him to the courthouse for questioning. Another person the next day was caught on a widely circulated video on social media being led away to an unmarked dark van by men in camouflage, later identified as Customs and Border Patrol officers. The suit was filed against the U.S. Marshal Service and the FPS. The judge determined for the purposes of the court hearing that Pettibone stop was likely done without probable cause. Now that's interesting, but had little information about the unidentified man in the video. That's interesting for sure. On Twitter, Mark Morgan, a senior official with Customs and Border Protection, referred to a person in a video who Border Patrol agents approached on the streets of Portland and moved the suspects to a safer location. Yeah. Now, that's insane. Inside the courthouse. For, for questioning to avoid a large... Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should have read the full thing first. A safer location for questioning to avoid a large and violent mob. Hmm. Suspecting he had previously assaulted a federal officer or destroyed federal property, he provided no further information about the encounter. They say the state has presented just one example of an arrest without probable cause and one example of an unreasonable seizure. That is the sum total of the evidence before me that underpins the legal injuries the state asserts in its brief. The judge wrote, in both circumstances of a, uh, of a federal seizure, it is either admitted or clearly visible that the agent's uniforms say police. Yes. Wow. Boom. So they, they counter, <laughs> counter, contradict themselves. Who did? The well, I guess this is two different articles, but... Uh this is so the they clearly say that the uniform said police. The judge is straight up Disproving saying, like, it. in what was it in the video? In both instances of the evidence presented before me, their uniforms clearly say police. Mm -hmm. So what is this unmarked, unidentified, unmarked vehicle? Okay, but the, to be fair, the judge did say no probable cause. Yeah, that's that to me is surprising, and I'm going to defer. I'm going to defer to the experts because I, I I would believe that the the federal uh, you know defense or whatever would would prove or try and present an argument for probable cause. And I think they did. They said they thought this guy was somebody who was damaging property and they wanted to move him to a safer location so there wouldn't be a violent mob. That's I that's actually fair. I agree. Sound, you know. Yeah. But I'll but I'll tell you what, look, the federal government has its own interests in mind and if they're saying no probable cause, well there you go. However, the judge still told them, "Nah, they can keep doing what they're doing. They're clearly police. They're clearly doing their thing." Yeah. So here's what he says. Beyond the two examples, the state failed to show that federal officers were engaged in any widespread unlawful practice or that others would be harmed in the future. 
It has presented no evidence of any official orders or policies and has presented no evidence that these allegedly illegal seizures are a widespread practice. Despite the broad language in its complaint, Oregon has shown at most that this type, this type of seizure has happened twice. Attorney Sheila Potter, deputy chief trial counsel for the attorney general's office, had argued that secretive maneuvers by federal officers make other protesters fear they'll be snatched off the street, blah, blah, blah. OK, I'm, I, I, we get the point. All we needed to hear from the judge was that the only evidence they could present clearly identified these, these men as police. Yep. You can argue that the seizures were unconstitutional. I, w- I will absolutely accept the judge's ruling on this one. And I think it's fair. I disagree. But at least it's not the judge, you know, just like, you know, jumping up on the table, dancing around and kicking papers at the, at, at the state. You know what I mean? True. They're saying, OK, OK, we get it. Probably, you know, it seems like there's no probable cause, but they're clearly cops. It's not widespread. It was a couple instances. Right. Fair point. What Especially we- when the next, like, uh, I think it was a week afterwards, uh, there was a press conference and they were showing the actual uniforms saying, you can clearly see police, you can clearly see, you know, the badge numbers. Look, yeah, there it is. Check it out right here. So you, you can see it on their, on the, you know, their arm, the, the badge number. And it says Customs and Border Protection right here. Boom. NZ39. And then, and then they talk about how these, these federal officers were getting doxxed by Antifa. So it's this. like, of course, like they don't even talk about that in the article that we just read. You right. Know? Well, so that was just like the judge's ruling. But look, look, sure. look this article has been is, going around because it's hilarious. This is beyond parody. Unidentified federal agents. And it's literally got his patch. And like, that's yeah, amazing. He's, he's actually identified in the picture they're using. Check this out. Check it's this out. Shameful. Here's what Vox wrote. This is this. Is, look, man, I feel like I'm reading some kind of action book or, or, or comic graphic novel, just not something based in reality. OK. In fact, outside the context of a domestic insurgency like the troubles in Northern Ireland, there is no example of state security forces being deployed under circumstances like this inside any democratic state. You about to drop yeah. some bombs on him, Tim? No, I mean, any any sane human being who, who understands life is like, what are you talking about? We have state police go out all the time. Yeah. Well, well, this is the most insane thing I've ever, I've seen written. Like, how does Vox have a green check mark if they write something like this? <laughs> to me, it sounds like they're admitting this is insurgency. <laughs> that's all I hear. What did they just say? That That's a good point. Outside of the context of domestic insurgency yeah. like Northern Ireland, there is no example. So, yeah. I guess, well... Kind of. I guess the argument is if this is an insurgency, uh-huh. then it's justified. Well, that's what they're saying. But look what he says. Look at in both of. Oh, let me read this this paragraph. The the crazy the other the crazy thing is that he's basically comparing this to the Civil War. I I know somebody was waiting for me to say it. I'm he's talking about Reconstruction, not me. I didn't I didn't I didn't legitimately bring it up. Yeah. The kind of violent federal deployment over the objections of state and local officials has no real precedent in American history. The closest parallels are Reconstruction, when Union troops occupied the states of the defeated former Confederacy and military deployments to the South during the Civil Rights era to enforce enforce desegregation orders. So in other words, it's totally legal. It's been done before. Can we move on? Yeah. Apparently not. In both of those cases, it was uniformed soldiers that were sent, not unidentified state security from an alphabet soup of obscure DHS agencies. Oh my God. More fundamentally, these troops were being used to protect moves towards racial progress, not suppress protesters who were there to demand it. Well, that's and there it is. blatant lying right there. Well, no, 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 no. It, it is, though. What, what he doesn't understand is that's actually a very childlike view of what they were doing. What they were doing was enforcing the law. When the law said this is what must be done, period. It wasn't about favoring an ideology or otherwise. It was about the courts had ruled, the laws were passed, done. Yep. So when it comes to what's going on in Oregon, when you try to breach a courthouse and burn it down and attack people, the law is very clear on that one. So yes, identified state security forces are being deployed. But see, here's how. Here's what they do. He's playing a very clever game with this fake news. He says, he, he says not unidentified state security, right? He didn't actually say in this paragraph, the guys down there were unidentified. He used a clever manipulation tactic to write overt fake news. So you assume. Right. Here's what he said. In both cases, it was uniformed soldiers, not unidentified state security forces. Did he say the men down there are unidentified security forces? No. No. He said during Civil War, it wasn't them. So you assume it. That way, when he comes to the next paragraph, out of 
he's it's technically telling the truth. This is the most egregious egregious example of technically the truth I have ever seen. And this is what these companies do all day, okay? Not every single one, but a lot of these digital only ridiculous, you know, companies that just you know, just like knock out dozens of articles of nonsense every day. Mm-hmm. Very, very clever wording. Very clever. You know, in both those cases, it was soldiers, not evil, fascistic monsters made of, you know, metal with claws to make people assume that's what's really going on. Yeah. Now, here's the funniest thing. There's no example of state security forces being deployed in any, and, and, uh, like this in any democratic state. First of all, you want to talk about like unmarked masked individuals in full tactical gear with with live ammunition going into residential areas to purge undesirables there are many many examples of that happening in democratic states you want to argue justification for whether or not they should or shouldn't be doing the certain operations they're all different i want to pretend like every single operation is the same but how about we pop over to something called the bopi this mm-hmm. is brazil's bopi they're basically like SWAT, and they've been criticized because their symbol is like a skull with, with pistols behind it, I guess. And a and dagger. A, a dagger through its Slammed head. down through the top of it. Yeah, wow. dude. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. So take a look at this here fella. this guy. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. He's identified. He's got his patch on his arm mm-hmm. in much the same way as like we point. see in Portland. That's a good point. But you can't see his eyes. You can't see his face. Mm-hmm. It's look. I'll, I'll be fair, man. It's similar. And these and these guys were heavily criticized. But they have rifles, like live ammunition. The dudes in Portland that are going out are doing crowd control. Yeah. So you know, Rand Paul wrote this article saying like, we should demilitarize the police and all that stuff, and was making reference to Portland. And I'm like, I agree, to a certain extent. The issue is more so accountability and oversight for the use of this of this machinery, technology, and equipment. Okay. So, look, if I see a bunch of violent, whatever you want to call it, extremists yeah. trying to burn down a building, I'm not going to freak out when identified federal law enforcement say, get off our property yeah. and then defend themselves. Yeah, it's like they really think everyone has no idea what happens after the peaceful protesters. Well, they don't even leave. They're still there. It's just when the the rioters pick up and start uh, attacking and did you know about the uh, the few guys that that stood there there was a couple uh, hero black men that stood and and blocked them where last in, night in, in portland. portland they they stood and, and i don't know the guy's name awesome dude um i think it's like freedom of speech something uh I, I don't know his tag but they they stood there they locked arms and actually stopped and he was like yelling he's like look if you guys really think that you know black lives matter you will join me i'm not afraid to stand here and he stood there and blocked blocked the the guys from breaking down the barricade last night it's pretty, i don't pretty i don't powerful video i don't think they do think that though i think these far left insurgents but they they, they held back the antifa members oh, for sure from breaking no, 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 down no. the barrier that's right it's pretty cool to see that though when he asked that crowd if they really cared yeah these people are just using this as a cover mm-hmm. they show up dude we've talked about it when they showed up the the occupy people the far leftists, the socialists showed up to the trayvon martin march in uh, in new york and then steered the crowd in the wrong direction away from the organizers. The organizers were like, we're gonna go to one police plaza and protest the NYPD. And then the Occupy people ran to the front Mm -hmm. and steered the crowd towards Wall Street. And all of those protesters like that became socialist protesters. Yep, exactly. And this is what I was saying, listen, this is what I was saying about the bank robbery thing yesterday. If you if you're marching with someone who's leading you to Wall Street chanting, you know, like we are the 99%, you're not protesting police brutality anymore. You might think you are, but no one's going to say you're like you're marching behind the dude against, you know, Wall Street or whatever. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. If you want to catch the full show, tune into this channel, subscribe, hit the like button or check us out on iTunes and Spotify. And we will soon have this podcast up for free on all podcast platforms. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all in the next episode.